Hello everyone and welcome to Know for GCSE. In this video we are going to be looking at every single exam question from all of the papers, the specimen papers on bioenergetics and this is all organised by topic which you can look at any timestamps. So let's begin. Also just a quick note that you can find all of these questions in a document in a description box for free. I've made this all my resource and I give you full uh, choice to use it however you wish. Let's begin by the first topic, photosynthesis. So the first question is to name some uses of photosynthesis. This is a three marker. So pause the video if you want to have a go. If not, keep watching. So photosynthesis releases energy in respiration. Cellulose is made from the products of it. Insoluble storage of starch. It can also be used for, to produce amino acids, converts fats to oils and things like that. Question two. Describe how energy for the photosynthesis reaction is gained by plants. So how do the photosynthesis reaction get energy? Now, it actually comes from the light energy, and this is absorbed via the chlorophyll from the sun. Let's move on to the next topic, which is about the photosynthesis required practical. So for this question, I've brought together all of the mark scheme answers for the required practical and put them here so what you need to do is dot out everything you can remember about the required practical and if you've missed anything from this mark scheme try to memorize it because it's definitely going to be important for the exam so you're going to start by taking a boiling tube and placing 10 centimeters away from light and or led source now the purpose of it being an led source is that it doesn't emit heat. Then you're going to add 10 centimeters cubed of sodium hydrogen carbonate solution. Now the purpose of it being sodium hydrogen carbonate instead of something like water is because it releases carbon dioxide for photosynthesis. And it is by you counting the bubbles of carbon dioxide that it releases, which is the way you are going to measure the rate of photosynthesis. You're then gonna place a piece of cut pondweed, which is the plant you're looking at, into the boiling tube with the cut end at the top. You're going to leave it for five minutes to acclimatise and then from five minutes onwards you're going to start the stopwatch, count the bubbles per minute. You're going to calculate the mean for five minutes and you're going to repeat these with increasing increments of distances from 20 centimetres to 30 centimetres to 40 centimetres. And you're going to look at how the distance affects the amount of carbon dioxide bubbles, which hence affects the rate of photosynthesis. So the next question, suggest two reasons why the rate of water loss in both plants changed after two and a half hours. So this is a question about the required practical and the response is because it was either warmer or it was less humid or the light intensity was higher or it was windier. So note that the answer to this question is basically what things or what um, different points cause the rate of photosynthesis to increase? What are the factors that cause photosynthesis to increase? But it's disguised under another question, which is what are the true reasons why water loss in the plants changed? So just try to connect that in your head. And that requires, that is for the higher level students, the triple science students. Now suggest one possible cause of an anomalous result in this uh, required practical. So an anomalous result can come from something like you misreading a value, you moved the lamp, the pond weed hadn't acclimatized in time, you cut a different length of pond weed, etc. Okay, let's move on to the next step of respiration. So why is mitochondria important in cells? This is two marker. So cells or cells require energy for metabolic function and mitochondria are the site of aerobic respiration where energy is released. A key point here, sorry I've made that black by accident, a key point is that you need to think mitochondria does not create energy, mitochondria releases energy. Okay, now you can actually lose a mark by saying creates instead of releases, because remember the principle in physics, energy cannot be created or destroyed, so it is just released. The next question, why does the heart rate increase during exercise? Now look at the marks for this question. This was a five marker. So think about every intricate step in how your heart can interact with the ability of you doing exercise. 
So let's look at the answer. So in order to increase this, the blood flow and to supply more glucose for respiration, to supply more oxygen for respiration and to supply more energy to the muscles at a faster rate, so to enable the muscles to contract faster and to remove lactic acid. So those are the reasons why the heart rate increases so many different things. So because you're increasing the blood flow and the blood carries substances like glucose and oxygen, both needed for respiration. And it also carries out the energy that is produced from the respiration. So a major thing is that it carries out carries loads of things that need to be transported. And another thing is to remove lactic acid and to enable muscles to contract faster. Okay, moving on to the next question. During exercise, the heart rate of smokers increases more than the heart rate of non-smokers. Now describe an investigation that would allow you to test this hypothesis. So let's see what the AQA exam board gave as a, an example of an investigation that could take place. So you get two groups of people. Now, one group will be the smokers and one group will be the non-smokers. Now, each group should have at least five people. Now, you're going to get both groups to do the same exercise. Note this is the control variable. Now, you're going to do this for the same amount of time, another control variable. You're going to ensure that, all of the, that each of the groups have the same health, the same age, the same gender, and you're going to measure the heart rate of each person before and after the exercise. So this is a dependent variable. You're then finally going to calculate the change in each person's heart rate and compare the results in the group. Now explain why having more red blood cells per centimetre cubed of blood is an advantage to an athlete. Now this is again a triple science question so it requires a bit further thought. So pause, have a read again, answer and let's look at the answer now. So having more red blood cells means that there's more hemoglobin present. And because there's more hemoglobin present, that means that there's more oxyhemoglobin that can be transported. And therefore, more oxygen allows for more aerobic respiration. And because there's more respiration, that means more energy can be created or released, sorry, in the muscle cells. Compare anaerobic respiration in a yeast cell with anaerobic respiration in a muscle cell. So, in terms of both anaerobic respiration in a muscle and yeast cell, they both, both release small amounts of energy compared to what they could release with aerobic. The yeast produces carbon dioxide, but the muscle cells do not produce carbon dioxide. The yeast produces ethanol, but the muscle cells only strictly produce lactic acid. And let's move on to the final subtopic in bioenergetics, which is metabolism. So explain why the numbers of phytoplankton are lower in winter months. Now, phytoplankton is just an example of an organism that lives in water. So because there's lower water temperatures, this means that there's a slow metabolic rate and there's a slow rate of growth and reproduction. And because there is a lower rate of photosynthesis, because it's the winter, this means that many will die. And why do the number of phytoplankton fall at the start of summer? And the reason why is because the water temperatures begin to get too high and this causes the denature of the metabolic enzymes that have been used to the winter. Now give two factors that affect a person's metabolic rate. Now this could be their age, this could be their gender. These are the two commonly used examples. One metabolic reaction is the formation of lipids. Give one other metabolic reaction in cells. So you could have chosen from a massive variety, but things include respiration, photosynthesis, the formation of urea, the formation of glycogen. But the last two are more paper two answers and the first two are more paper one answers. And the final question of biology paper one, 
explain why the metabolic rate of an organism is greater than the metabolic rate of organism E, despite both being kept at a constant body temperature. So basically, why are the metabolic rates of two organisms different, despite the heat being the same? Now, um, obviously, you'll be given the diagram, so it's a bit hard to answer this question on your own. But D has a larger surface area to volume ratio, and therefore it would lose heat more quickly. D requires greater rate of respiration. The other one requires more metabolism. So it's just different uh, nuances in those two answers. Okay, thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, be sure to check out the rest of this series. I'm doing it for every biology, chemistry and physics subtopic. So hopefully it could provide some use to you. And don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. All the best for your exams. And see you soon.